Greetings, dear ones. I'm Cryon of Magnetic Service. Don't you find it interesting that all over the planet, as far back in history as you can record or find or examine, humans believe in the creative source. We have told you that this is your intuitiveness. Not only that, most of the planet, through all of history, felt that when the human being died, something else occurred. There was the feeling of eternalness, indeed of beauty and of even love in a future life. Intuitive, not just here in Egypt, anywhere you go. Wind forward into right now, and it's the same. I bring this up because I want you to examine this with me in a way I've not asked you to before. Since 2012, there has been a quickening of light. And this has a phrase, the quickening of light comes with enhanced perception of truth. And when you start looking at what is truth, it seems that everyone has a different idea. This is not a long channel, but I'm going to ask some profound questions. Those listening to my voice here, in this Giza place, can join with those listening later. For we are still in Egypt. It's a good place to examine your own spirituality. You sit only meters away from a profundity of truth. Those who would build the 100 ton boxes to hold the spirit and hold it so strong for reasons of their own had their truth. But believe me, it had to do with the afterlife. It had to do the, with, the, with the nirvana that they themselves believed in, which related to the creative source. And here you are. What does time mean to you? Some of you would feel perhaps in that place that you just came from, you would feel perhaps the intent of the builder. And the intent of the builder would be you. You've built yourself some kind of faith, have you not? You're on a quest where you're willing to listen to these kinds of things called channeling. So somewhere along the line, you have built your own pillars of belief. I'm going to ask a question. Some of you, you might even call spiritual renegades. <laughs> How do you test whether you're a spiritual renegade? That's easy. When you go home for the holidays, do they accept you? <laughs> you know what I'm saying. You've stepped away from a linear system of rules and doctrines and prophets, perhaps, of even statues. You've stepped away. And when you do, those in those linear truth systems look at you and say, you're crazy. And it goes like this. How can you believe in the creative source, the God, and have no rules? How can you possibly step away from a grand prophet that billions of individuals respect and love? How can you step away? from scriptures that tell about the right way of living and love and all of the things of the past. How can you step away 
and expect that we are going to then say, yes, you've got a truth. They'll tell you, you have nothing. <clears throat> Some will even call you floaters because there is no prophet and there are no rules and there is no writing. There are no buildings to report to. There's no right or wrong way of meditation or prayer. None of those things. So how have you built this? What are your pillars? How do you support a roof or a ceiling that is all that you believe and your faith without having some kind of pillars to do this and instead of saying, well, I believe what I believe when I wish to believe it. And that's why you don't get a good reception, dear ones. So let me help. You're not renegades, you're revolutionaries. Because there'll come a day, dear ones, when what you have here and what you believe starts to occur to other human beings as something that is new. <laughs> Perhaps it is magnificent because it contains some things that haven't been accepted before. One is common sense about God. Another is the intuitive self. How does your intuition feel about spirit, about God. So I want to help this. Let us say one of those in a linear system with many rules and many words and many processes and many procedures and many prophets even perhaps would come to you and say, tell me, what do you believe? What do you say? For the first time, I'm going to present to you the four pillars of truth. And you're going to say, ah, crying, you're about to define truth, are you? <laughs> Wait. Here's what you could say. And you can say this to them in a way that they will understand and believe that you're okay. Or you'll be so far removed from anything that they know that they will still shake their heads and walk away. Let me give you the four pillars right now. I want you to take a breath. And the first one is this. The creator, which is love, made me in love. Therefore, my first pillar is I am love. Now that's a pillar of truth, dear ones, and yet define love for me. Each one of these pillars will be undefinable, and yet they will define the majesty of what it holds up, which is your magnificence and the creator mirrored in you. Pillar number one, I said, I was made in love, therefore I am love. Pillar number two, the most compassionate source in the universe, the creator that knows my soul, created me in compassion. I am compassion. Define compassion for me, and you will then define perhaps a process or an emotion, but you can never define the consciousness of it. For it is so expansive, like love, it contains so much more than the word. And that's just two of them. A more difficult concept is pillar number three, and you might look at the person and say, my soul is eternal, and the Creator has created my soul as an eternal soul, therefore I am patient. You can try to define patience, dear ones, but when you find a true patient person, it's beyond description. Or a patient God that is beyond description. 
So right away we have three definitions that cannot be really defined holding up truth, which also cannot be defined. Number four, the God of the universe is majestic and powerful and all that is. Therefore, I am strong. Therefore, I am love, I am compassion, I am patient, I am strong. And that defines my truth, which is God. And in those four is everything you'll ever need. You can look inward with those four and not just above of what a pillar supports. It supports you and your life. It supports how old you will be at a certain age, if you understand what I'm saying. How much energy you will have because of the consciousness of those four pillars that talks to your cellular structure, which listens. Imagine a consciousness of those four pillars then talking to the cells. It's almost like Moses listening to the burning bush because your cellular structure is tuned in to the boss and that's you. And that you that is you is the one that is defined by the four pillars of, of the truth. Brian, you talk in a cryptic way. No, I don't. I talk in love. And sometimes the multidimensionality of these things will get the best of your logic and you'll have to surrender. As I've said before, there are some things you cannot define. And love is the first. True compassion is the next. I said this before, when a human being looks you in the eye, who you adore, and they say, I love you, what do you say back? Do you say, well, what do you mean by that? <laughs> Never do. Because you know it is beyond definition and so is your truth that defines that of who you are as a creation of God. I don't want one of you to stand from this place and doubt for a moment that God knows your name. No matter what has happened to you in the past or recently, no matter what you have come for or with, there is an outstretched hand that represents love, compassion, patience, and strength. And that outstretched hand is almost like the rest of you, waiting to take your hand, come together, so that you can get on with it. Get on with being peaceful, forgiving, using and solving problems every single day so that you sleep at night so well, so you don't worry about tomorrow, so that you know truly you're taken care of. These are the four pillars I present for the first time to an accelerated, evolving consciousness of any of those who wish to hear it. It's beautiful, is it not? As time goes on, I will present other things that I have not presented before because you're ready for it, because you're starting to know what you don't know. <laughs> and so it is.